Welcome to Kids STEM, brought to you by Pikes Peak Library District. My name is Miss Emily, and today we're going to be making a Lego balloon car. So if you're like me, you may have seen this idea floating around on the internet, and I always just wondered, does it really work? Well, I can tell you it was a bit of a challenge to get working correctly, but once we did, we had a lot of fun. It's a great way to engage your little one in trial and error engineering. But I'll give you a few tips to make sure your project goes smoothly, as well as ways to incorporate science and math. So let's get started. To make your Lego balloon car, you're going to need a long flat surface, a balloon, and some basic Legos. Of course, the beauty of Legos is your child can choose whatever they want, but I found what worked best. Um, I have three of these long flat pieces. This is a two by 12 and two two by 10s. I also choose, chose to use six wheels on these three flat two by two axles. And for the balloon stand, I found this tall gray two by two that slopes into a two by one and this tall two by one piece here. And for the balloon holder itself, I have a window. Um, it's a two by one and there's no glass in it. I've also seen people use um, what's called a two by one with a handle piece for the balloon holder for the balloon to go through here. Or you can make your own kind of like this, but I found that it does tend to break apart when you blow up the balloon. So I like the window best if you have one. Now I'm gonna go ahead and assemble my car. And there you have it. The reason I chose these pieces is because you want your car to be as light as possible, as long as possible, and you want your balloon to be raised up a bit to allow for it to expand without breaking um, your balloon holder off of the car. And depending on your uh, child's age and ability, you can either have these pieces already laid out for them, or you can see if they can try to figure out you know, what works best for them. If you choose that route, it's a great example of how trial and error is used in engineering. Talk about what worked, what didn't work, and make guesses as to what might make it work better next time. Here is our Lego car. Now it's time to put in the balloon. At this point, if you want to, you can talk to your little one about some of the basic scientific principles in action here. For example, we have Newton's first law of motion, which states that an object at rest will stay at rest, and an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon by an external force. Here we have our object at rest. Now I'm going to cause the car to begin moving by trapping energy inside the balloon. The elasticity of the material is holding on to that energy. And once I release, the material contracts, forcing air out, causing thrust. Once the thrust is depleted, the friction of the tires on the wooden surface of the table causes the car to stop. Hey, that went pretty far. I wonder how far it went. Well, we can find out using our tape measure. Let's see how far my car went. It started here and ended here. Let's use our tape measure to see how far it went. Looks like my car went about 12 inches. Another fun math concept you can incorporate into this activity is making a table. Let's say you have two cars that are racing each other. In the first race, car A went six inches and car B 
went 12 inches. Which car went furthest? Car B. And you can keep recording your numbers for each race. Your kids are going to have a lot of fun racing their cars and designing their builds. I hope you enjoyed this one. And be sure to check out pplb.org slash kids for more fun ideas. And our virtual summer reading program, Summer Adventure, presented by Children's Hospital Colorado, starts June 1st. Bye-bye.